Alrighty, morning everybody, and it's cast time once again. And then um, let me let me uh, start by intro on this music. This is gonna be Eternal Wanderer, Light After Dark, and this is kind of a this is actually a quote unquote important album because uh, Eternal Wander is a band that came from the Ukraine, you know, and they're currently being invaded by Russia right now. And this album just came out yesterday. I think yesterday evening. So, so I mean, they're being severely fucked with by Russia right now, but yet they still managed to get an album off. So, so yeah, props to those guys. So, most most certainly going to be playing this here. And uh, I did do a copyright check, and it's 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 not copyrighted. It's free to use. So definitely going to be playing it here now. Unless they decide to fake jax me at the last second, like like sometime last night, and decide to go ahead and copyright it anyway. But anyway, at the time, this album here is uh, safe to use. So let me go ahead and duh, yeah, siren at 4 a.m. And I forgot to do this a few minutes ago. I got to sound test it. Let me jump ahead. All right, yeah. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, I tell you what, let me let me crank it to a hundred. I'll still be checking this from time to time. So if it gets way too loud, I'll turn it down. It's a pretty quiet album. It's mostly acoustic. So. Uh, but. Otherwise, for yesterday. I'm, uh, I'm back to streaming footsies. Uh, for those that don't know. It's my all-time favorite 2D fighter. Um, especially now that. Uh, I just. Uh, in fact. I just uh when I when I first opened it up, okay. If I can find it. Yeah. Um But um I've totally forgotten about this. Every time you beat arcade mode, you get a color palette. I don't think you got this many. But just the cycling through this just looks cool as hell. Kind of remind, kind of reminds me of a, of an '80s arcade game called Missile Command, where um, like every two or three waves you complete, it changes the whole color scheme. It looks cool as hell. All right, let me sound, let me sound check this. Not quiet. Yeah. Then, um, I ran into this color here. Uh, it's my favorite color scheme, uh, black and blue. Uh, for those that have seen me uh, stream Guilty Gear Rev 2, it's one of the reasons why I play, uh, his name's Kai Kisk, because uh, I unlocked a uh, color 17, I believe it is, which is a uh, black and blue color scheme. Or I think it's, I think it's either royal blue or metallic blue, one of those two, but... I've loved the scheme ever since I was a, probably back when I was a teenager, maybe my 20s. So I saw this, and I'm like, oh! So, so yeah, definitely back on this game. And then um, another, it kind of took, is uh, you gotta customize your head. Or at least the top of your head. When I first saw this, I was kind of confused as to how it worked. But um, after I fiddling around with this a little bit, I just created a small brain. So 
Orig <laughs> originally, I just had I just had that. Um, small brain. For those that don't know, it's a it's a fighting game term. It 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 uh it denotes somebody who's very stupid, or who does does a lot of stupid mistakes. And if uh anybody who saw me stream footies yesterday, I was screwing up left and right. So, but uh I went with this though. So. It just looks a little more realistic, you know, you got, you got the brainstem, you know, you got, you got the brainstem there, and then you got, then you got the tiny brain there, so, hopefully people get, hopefully people get the reference. But, uh, yeah, I didn't, I, again, I knew about this, but when I first saw it, I'm like, what the hell? But, once I started fiddle farting around with it. And, um, I mean, despite the 8-bit look, it, it it's customizable as hell. I mean, most other games that have this kind of stuff, you're stuck with, um, you're stuck with a limited amount of skin choices. Let's make a dunce cap. So let's see if we can um Not quite there. Okay. But uh, you can even make words doing this. In fact, I think I did just that. Um. Yeah, I did this last night, but it didn't didn't really look right. So I went with that. I had that, but again, it just didn't look quite right. Like I said, I, I actually kind of like this. Um, but... One other thing that I did. Oh, and I. And for what it's worth, I actually uh, last night's stream too. I I beat my record on the hit confirm mini game. It, it originally was two, but um, I actually beat it. Like I said, uh, my high score is now nine. But yeah, the the goal. Oops. If you hit him, then you have to attack a second time. Yeah, too slow. So. And then you're, you don't do that. So. Could have sworn I hit the button a second time. But, um, I tried something different. 
I'm not even looking at the fighters. I'm looking off to the left side of the screen. I was doing this on my stream yesterday. Oh, got jumpy. Just listening for the sound effects. Like that. Like that. Nope. I had it on the 21st frame. You only have 20 frames or you have to do your second attack in 20 frames, so too slow. Also, something else that I've been doing. Um, since one of the reasons why I like Footsie so much is, that, as you can tell, it's an 8 bit game. So it uses next to no resources at all. In fact, let me look. Yeah. 5% CPU. Yeah, that's, that's about it. 5% on the CPU. So, like I said, it uses next to no resources. So, back when I was streaming Guild Wars 2, I could have both games going at once. So, I didn't... so, one thing I started doing on these recent streams is I started playing, um, I, I also had uh, Clicker Heroes running in the background. And, speak, speaking of that, let me, um, let me get everything updated here. Yeah, uh, so I'd be playing footsies while Clicker Heroes is running in the background. So, so yeah, definitely in the future for at least a while, I'll probably be playing footsies again. Or, I'll be playing footsies right now. And, um, I did check, um, uh, I actually got lucky yesterday, too. Let me bail out. Yeah. Looks like I got lucky again, too. But, uh... But for the longest time, nobody was ever on. It always looked like this. Like, just totally empty. Like I said, um, looks like uh, going forward, I'll be playing uh, footsies with Cookie Clicker running right in the background, as well as Zachariah Pinball. That's another um. I've taken this game up again. So, oh, I forgot. Oh, let me back up. Let me back up. I'll be um, I'll be playing footsies for probably about an hour. It's just one of those. It's one of those games that I really can't. I really, I can't really play for any longer than that. So, but otherwise, um, and then after that, I'll also be playing some Zachariah Pinball. Um, I did some, I did various modes. I played random tables. Um, there's actually a bunch of extra modes. There's story mode. There's campaign mode. There's also a zombie invasion mode. But that one there, I'm actually better. I'll actually better off just making a a full blown separate video. Which, which is exactly what I did, and it's up on YouTube right now. But this is a game that's actually starting to grow on me. It just, the more I'm playing it, the more I'm liking it. So. 
So, yep, that's my setup. Once again, it's gonna be putsies and and clicker heroes. And for about an hour later, we playing some Zacky pinball. And then, and boy did I get, boy did I get lucky yesterday. Um, bought all the groceries I needed. Um, and I'm I was off last night, so I basically dodged a serious bullet. There was a there was a wintry mix here. Uh, it started like probably in the afternoon or evening, and I think it's still going on right now. Just snow and ice, and just. Hearing like lots and lots of little tinkling outside my window. <laughs> so it's going pretty rampant. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a drink of some Arizona green tea. ice in March so, so gotta look gotta love that climate change although this wasn't as bad as last year I think last year we got out we're getting ice storms in like April and I think May as well or or worse depending on how you look at it I mean it's like early March and we're already getting ice storms so like I said you gotta love that climate change it's too bad too, cause spring's my favorite season. I mean, it, you, back in the day, you know, I used to dread the winter, cause of, you know, cause of all the snow and extreme cold and whatnot. Now, not so much. Now it's like, now it's like spring. Spring is now probably the most dreaded, most dreaded season of the year, cause again, cause of all the, uh, like last night's ice storm. It's just one example. Who knows how many more we're gonna get. That's it's what I liked about spring, you know. Everything is budding, and you know the grass is starting to grow. The the buds are popping out on the trees and stuff like that. Just just the whole rebirth and renewal thing. But now they're throwing ice into the mix. Yeah, throwing snow and ice. Yeah, who knows how many more we're gonna get. And also last night, um, I watched a video from one of my favorite YouTube channels called Second Thought. Um, it's just it's a channel that's centered around uh, basically socialist, um, le and, uh, leftist politics. Um, I'm not a I'm not a. I took a political quiz like a few months ago. And the results were libertarian socialist, but I don't, I don't go running around telling people I'm a car carrying socialist or anything like that. But uh, it it is, despite that, it, it is one of my favorite channels. Um, I don't remember the, I don't remember the exact uh, exactly what he was saying about, about um uh, about Putin. But um. I do remember one. I do remember uh, part of that video had me recalling. Uh, I know in uh, in my all-time favorite book, *Romance of the Three Kingdoms*, uh, just it's it's centered around China. It was all fractured and stuff. All these kingdoms vying for power, and they're they're all trying to unify the entire country under one ruler. Well, uh, what a one tactic, one tactic they would do, and I, I think. Uh, I think on two occasions, they um, they've done this. Like, um, if Kingdom A is being attacked by Kingdom B, and they might uh, they'll they'll send a messenger to an ally, 
like Kingdom C, like you know, requesting help. Like, hey, we're in distress here. Can you come and help? And uh, Kingdom C would, you know, yeah, sure. You know, they'll they'll come in and they'll they'll help them out. They'll repel the invasion. But then they'll act, they'll end. Okay, but then they'll they'll take over Kingdom A. I forgot the, I forgot the technical term for it. I want to say annex. They'll annex that kingdom. Herb. Hang on, I'm, I'm thinking here real quick. But, but basically, but basically that, on at least two occasions in this book, that's what happened. They'll, they'll march in to try to assist this kingdom, but, at, but, when the smoke clears, they end up actually taking over the kingdom. You know, adding it on to their own. But I, it might have been, there might have been a contract beforehand, or there might have, or that, that's what I was wanting to say. They're, um, you know, Kingdom C might have actually secretly orchestrated the whole thing. Like, um, got Kingdom B to attack Kingdom A. That way, so Kingdom A would, you know, request help from Kingdom C to jump in and help them. You know, kind of a, using it as a pretext for them to conquer that territory. So, I don't know the exact details of what the Ukraine's doing, but I thought I heard somewhere in there that the Ukraine was requesting help. And, God help if they requested help from us. Because... Again, after watching part of this video, I got a feeling I don't know exactly what's going to happen. The U.S. is going to jump in, help them out, repel the Russians, but then uh, end up, uh, but end up uh, take, taking over the Ukraine, you know, or trying to, you know, maybe not, maybe not like overthrow the current ruler and set up their own or something like that. At least not, at least not overtly. You know, but you know, maybe I'll try to stick around and help. You know, you know, maybe like help. You know, help the Ukrainian people recover by building some McDonald'ses and some Dairy Queens, and you know, maybe like build a Walmart there. And I mean, it might it might sound far. I mean, as far fetched as it might sound, but basically, the Ukraine needs to be careful with what they wish for. They might get it. And, and I'm sure it's fairly well known that uh it seems like the US is on a is hell bent on world domination, because I mean you know, meddling in the affairs of all these other countries. You know But you, you, again you got you kinda you kinda get you kinda get the idea here, you know. Might be asked, you know. Might be shooting their own self. They might be shooting their own selves in the foot. I mean, I get, you know, they're being overrun by Russia, and there's nothing they can do about it. You know, they can't. They can't repel them by themselves. So, but like, like I said, that was one of the. But after, when watching this video, that was one of the things that first came to mind. Just, uh, the U.S. might end up actually taking over the Ukraine. Otherwise, uh, that's going to do it for me. Um, I've said all the things that I wanted to say this morning. So, I'll just go ahead and call it good. And let's hope this music isn't copyrighted. So, but, but otherwise, hey, thanks for uh, dropping in and hanging out with me, everybody. I appreciate... Or, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. That was my uh, stream closing thing. Stream closing statement. Anyway, um, I should be able to do this again. 
sometime tomorrow. Um, typically around 3 a.m. But like in this case here, it was done earlier. But but un until then, everybody, I'm babbling. But see you all next time. Bye for now.